I mentioned in some previous videos that I use Google SketchUp to create 3D models of things that I use all the time, such as buildings or vehicles or interior spaces. And this is a great time saver because once you have it built in 3D, you can always use it as a reference. I can rotate it around, I can see it from different angles, I can take screenshots, I can put it right in my comic and use it as a reference for a certain page or a panel. And I wanted to walk through an example of where we take a sketch that I did you know, on, a, on a, a quick layout page, a quick panel, quick sketch, and then insert that sketch into Google SketchUp. We're gonna model the space, kind of figure out what it looks like in 3D, and then we're gonna take a screenshot of that and insert it in a comic page. But before we do that, I wanted to run through some examples of previous models that I had built and used in comic panels. So we'll look at the model and then we'll look at a finished page, a finished panel to see what that looks like. So let's take a look at some of the examples that I am talking about. This is the captain's chair on the bridge of the Zebulon. Here's Sparks sitting in the chair addressing some of the crew. This is the tube room at the lower level of the Zebulon. This is the room where they can dock a tube to an enemy ship. Here's the crew getting ready to descend the tube. Here's an exterior shot in SketchUp of the Zebulon attached to the enemy ship. And here is the Zebulon attacking the enemy ship to subdue it for boarding. Here's the Zebulon with wings lowered. And here's probably the most complicated model that I have done in SketchUp, which is the Ori mining facility, the enemy mining facility on an asteroid built out of a mountain. And this is where the enemy brings unwilling labor to work at the facility and mine the mines behind in the mountains behind it. And here's the shot of some of the unlucky aliens being brought to the facility. So now that we've seen some examples of how I used SketchUp models in other scenes, we're gonna take this sketch that I did of this scene, which is uh, the specter addressing the high council in the council chamber. We've basically got two specters standing at a podium. We've got the high council sitting around a curved DS that they're addressing. There's a specter logo on the background. We've got two monitors curved with the wall behind them, and we've got a round ceiling element hanging from the ceiling above the podium. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert this into SketchUp so that we don't have to flip back and forth between programs. But before we work on the interior 3D model, let's take a look at the building that it's in. Here's the Great Hall. This is the main government building on Zantabar, the Spectre homeworld, and just kind of looping it around it. That council chamber is inside the Great Hall. So we're going to assume that you have some basic SketchUp knowledge. This is not a tutorial on how to use SketchUp and its features. I can do additional videos to build some basic model components. But here we're going to assume you have a little basic knowledge. So the first thing we're going to do is create a square as our floor plane and uh, create a group out of that square and extrude it up about a foot. And then we're going to draw some bisecting lines and some additional guidelines to help us lay out our floor plan. So I originally conceived of this space as having a central raised platform where Spectre could address the High Council sitting at a curved dais at the far end of the room. So we're going to build that platform here by creating a series of circles and extruding them up into cylinders. And each cylinder is going to be stepped down to create steps and the platform. And the idea is that the top platform is going to be a round area where we can put a podium. And then each step going down, creating sort of a Pac-Man shaped uh, wrap around the center podium. So we're basically bisecting each step and creating angles to cut away and allowing each step to wrap around the central top podium. And then we're going to create a group out of this, move it into place, and that's where our guidelines come in to help us locate things. So I want this centered in the room, and then we're going to create a walkway to the steps in the platform. So we're going to just extrude a little rectangle move it to the center of the space and extrude it towards the podium. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is build the dais that the High Council sits at, that the podium is addressing. So we're going to create a guideline. We're going to create a two-point arc. We're going to extend some angled lines back to the wall and then do an offset of the curved front of the dais. And this will allow us to create a group and extrude it up. So we're going to enclose any gaps in the lines. We're going to erase any extraneous lines as we're doing here. And then we're going to select all of the components, creating a group out of that, that we can extrude upwards and then move into place. So now that we've located the dais, we've got the platform in place. We're gonna create the actual podium on the platform by creating another circle, extruding a cylinder up and extruding a cylinder down towards the floor. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the sketch. Looks pretty good as far as a match. We're gonna lower 
the podium down to a standing height and raise the dais up a little higher and we're going to create a surface for anybody standing at the podium to lay their papers or in this futuristic alien digital world tablet uh, by angling up a panel and creating that podium so that's the podium the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create the wall the curved wall behind the dais so we're going to extend the floor out a little bit we're going to go ahead and create a curve to match the curved dais and we're going to create a group to extrude that whole block upwards and the idea here is that behind the dais is this big curved surface it's got two flat planes on the ends and the idea there is that there would be doors on either end where maybe there's a room in the back that members of the high council would come out before they're sitting at the dais so we're going to go ahead also and create this medallion. So I'm going to extrude a cylinder up. I'm going to center it on the back wall. And this is where our Spectre logo is going to go, which is hanging on the back wall, if you remember our sketch, behind the High Council member. So we're creating a cylinder and just kind of guiding it into place. And that looks pretty good. So it's centered on the wall now. And we're going to go ahead and insert a PNG of the Spectre logo. I'm going to create some guidelines so I know where the center is of the cylinder. We're going to locate the symbol on that cylinder and we're going to go scale it down and center it in the room. The nice thing about SketchUp is you can scale things up or down, move into place, shift things around. It's real simple to manipulate the program. We're going to go ahead and erase the guidelines there and I want this cylinder to kind of have uh, a border. So we're going to create a new cylinder. So we extrude the cylinder back towards the wall, create a new circle and we're going to pull that through to create a border on this medallion. So that looks pretty good. So right now, it looks like most of our major components are in place. We've got the curved wall behind the dais. We've got the medallion with the Spectre logo on the back wall. We've got the raised dais, and we've got the raised platform and podium. The next thing we're going to do is raise the floor behind the dais. The idea here is that the members of the High Council are sitting above everybody, even if you're standing at the raised platform addressing them. It's kind of like Rick and Morty, the Council of Ricks at the Citadel. So we're going to go ahead and raise that floor up a bit. And the next thing we're going to do is create the two curved monitors on either side of the medallion and in the center of the curved wall. So we're going to just do an offset here and extrude a shape up to create that screen. So we're creating a group out of this curved offset that we created and extruding it up. And we're going to kind of get that in a rectangular shape, kind of like a 16 by 9 ratioed monitor. Get that component shaped correctly and raise it to be centered here. And then we're going to go ahead and copy that and mirror it and then locate it on the other side of the medallion. That way we don't have to draw it again. We're going to flip it on the red axis, I believe it is. And then we're going to use a couple of guidelines uh, from the corner, you know, where uh, so we can offset it from the medallion the same distance. So I'm going to create some vertical lines and create a block that I can copy over at the same point where the guideline comes through the medallion on the other side. And now I can move the monitor in place, attach it to the same point, and now I've got equal monitors on either side of the medallion. So with the raised floor in place, I want to create a couple of doorways. So I actually did them off screen and inserted them into place on either side of the curved wall. The next thing we're going to do is create steps so that we have a way to get up to the elevated platform. I know in this futuristic world, there should probably be a better way to get to the upper level than uh, the primitive stair. But nonetheless, we're going to create a staircase. Now I'm an architect, so I'm going to follow code here. A standard stair is a 7-inch rise and an 11-inch tread. So we're basically going to create 7-inch blocks, copy them, and offset them by 11 inches until we reach the top step to get to the top of the platform. I'm going to create a group and copy it on either side. We're looking back at our sketch here. A lot of the pieces are starting to form. And the next thing we want to do is create our ceiling element. So now looking back at our reference image, everything is in place, but we need to create our ceiling. So we're going to go ahead and create a couple of guidelines here to help us locate the different components of the ceiling. So I, I wanted an interesting ceiling, so I kind of envisioned this round extrusions hanging down where light would come through. I'm going to create a big circle. So once we rotate that circle and get it into place, the idea is that this central element is going to kind of look like a Deadpool logo. It's going to have a round area, a vertical line through the center, and then two half moon shapes on either side of it. So we're going to create a group out of this, and we're going to add the different guidelines so we can get that shape. We're going to do some offsets, some areas around the central cylinder. We're going to offset the guideline in the center and use a two-point arc to create 
those half moon shapes. Once we get that into place, I can copy that onto the other side by using a guideline in another two point arc. We're now gonna create a group out of that, extrude it down, and that's our center piece. And then we're gonna create some offsets on either side of it. And the idea is that the light either natural light or artificial light would come down through, through the gaps through this interesting ceiling element. So we're gonna create some groups out of the components. We're gonna erase the pieces we don't need, create a group out of each and extrude those guys down to match the height uh, and elevation of the centerpiece. And by just clicking on one surface and the other, I can get them to align pretty quickly, create a group out of the ceiling, and then try different ceiling heights to see what looks good. This is about 20 feet, I think we should raise it up a little bit I think that's a little too low so raise it up and that is the ceiling so the ceilings in place that looks pretty good the final piece we're gonna do is again being an architect I want to provide safety so we're gonna add some handrails to the steps on either side of the raised platform so we're gonna basically follow the angle of the steps just create a little group block here and then do some extrusions to get the handrails to extend out the bottom of the stair and at the top of the stair. And then we're just gonna create a volume. So one of the nice things about SketchUp is you can create a group, and if you click on that group, you can edit it alone without affecting anything else. SketchUp is a very sticky program, so if you don't create a group, you can tend to grab something. If there's a line attached to another line and they're not isolated in a group, it'll grab and pull that line with it, which is a little annoying. So by isolating the group and editing it outside of the rest of the model, you can see the model's dimmed here in the background with only the handrail full color bright. You can work on that handrail without having to affect the rest of the model. So you can make a group out of the handrail, copy it over and get it into place. I've added some chairs behind the curved DS. This is basically the model. So this is what the uh, finished model looks like. This is what it looks like inserted into a comic page. And I'm gonna use this as a guideline to finish this drawing. So that's how I use Google SketchUp to create 3D models for things that I use over and over again in my comics. And I hope you see how valuable it is to create a 3D model of something that you use not only over and over again, but maybe something you use once, but you don't understand what it looks like in three dimensions. I understand this was not an instructional video, so I'm gonna do some additional videos on how to use SketchUp. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you have anything to say or you have any questions, um, add a comment or question in the comment section below the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram that will be in the description below and thanks for watching we'll see you next time thanks